Bonjour. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm not a morning person. No matter how hard I try or how early I go to bed, it took me three hours to get my head out of my bottom. Three hours during which I fake being civilized. I wake up early because I have to take my daughter to school and work, but in an ideal world, I would have breakfast in bed every morning. In fact, I would have lunch and dinner in bed too if I could. Oscar Wilde used to call breakfast in bed exercise, and believe it or not, you can get a lot done in bed. I didn't mean it that way. Maybe I never got over those fake sick days where my mother would serve me meals in bed all day and let me watch movies. Anyways, here are a few tricks to enhance your breakfast in bed experience. On y va? Now, you might be of the school that breakfast in bed is uncomfortable, that it leaves crumbs in the bed, and that meals should be eaten on a table like civilized people, and let's face it, you're uptight. So this morning, indulge me and let loose. The first and most important thing is to get the right tray. It should be a tray that has depth and sides to it so that the food doesn't spill all over the bed. I also use these very practical um, folding legs. I keep them in the closet in the bedroom. And in case you're having breakfast in bed with someone, um, you can just, after you're done eating, put the tray on the side. And it also gives this very five-star hotel vibe, which is never disagreeable. The second most important thing is setting in your tray fabric or a mat. I use leftover kimono fabric that I collect, um, but you can use anything you'd like. It gives a hotel feel and it also muffles the sound, which takes the breakfast in bed experience to a whole nother level. If you're a rebel like myself and you still eat gluten, then put your toast or muffin or pain au chocolat or croissant in a little basket that has a napkin to keep it warm. If you're having breakfast in bed alone, you can prepare your toast in advance or you can have um, these small containers to put your butter, your honey. I use these small cups to put jam. You can also put your almond butter if you don't have dairy. And it's really practical. That way you don't use too much um, tray space with large containers. You can put your cutlery and wrap it um, in your napkin. That way it prevents it from falling off the tray and it muffles the sound. And by the way, using a real napkin will make a whole lot of difference. I really recommend pouring your tea or coffee in a thermos or a container that will keep it warm so that you have a couple of cups available. Milk for the tea drinkers. Um, I really recommend investing in egg holders. They'll make a difference, I guarantee you. And of course, salt and pepper for the eggs. If you have one, set a fresh flower on the tray. Even if it's just for yourself, trust me on that one. Oh, and by the way, don't forget your vitamins and your prescriptions. Nothing worse than having to get out of bed once you're comfortable. Don't feel guilty. So many of the writers that I admire used to work horizontally. Truman Capote, Marcel Proust, a French writer you need to know about if you want to look good at French dinner parties. Just think of breakfast in bed as a bonding experience with yourself or someone special. Alors, my secrets to breakfast in bed. Find an excuse to have a sick day. Choose a tray with sides, set a mat, cover your warm toasts with a napkin, put your cutlery in another napkin, use small cups for jam and butter, use a thermos, invest in egg holders, salt and pepper, set a flower, and remember the pillbox. So all you have to do now is enjoy. Voilà, c'est tout pour ce matin. I would love to know what excuses you come up with to negotiate breakfast in bed. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and please subscribe to the channel, which is the little red button at the bottom of the screen. Au revoir, et à très vite.